Good morning, dear student. So today, let us discuss the topic nonlinear programming problem (NLPP). So this topic is related with the syllabus of the PG fourth semester of Nanamanjuri University. In the mathematical formulation of a real-life problems, sometimes it may happen the objective function, say it may be nonlinear or say the constraint equation may be nonlinear. So then if the objective function as well as uh, constraints if we found nonlinear type then the problem is called nonlinear programming problem. For solving nonlinear programming problem we have some methods, say Lagrangian method, Kuntaker method, Bill's method, Wolf's method. So there are so many methods for solving nonlinear programming problem. So today let us discuss the solution of nonlinear programming problem by Lagrangian method. The general form of the nonlinear programming problem is defined as follows, say Z is a real valued function of n variable. The objective function is maximize or minimize z, then subject to the constraint. Gix, so less than or equal to greater than or equal to pi, where either fx or some gi or both are nonlinear. The at least one of the equation is nonlinear, then the problem is term as nonlinear programming problem. If the objective function as well as constraint are linear, then the problem is linear programming problem. So today's topic is nonlinear programming problem. Uses of nonlinear programming, the NLPP may be found say in the natural science, physical science, engineering, economics, mathematics, say trade and commerce, then national planning by the government, so many situations we founded the application of the linear programming problem. Before going to the Lagrangian method, said we have to know the sum terms, convex function, convex set, then concave function. So convex set, say C is a set, this set is convex, if x1, x2 belongs to C, implies W equal to theta x1 plus 1 minus theta x2 belongs to C, theta line between 0 and 1. If this condition is fulfilled, then the set is said to be convex. Then convex function, so let fx be a function defined on a convex set, then we say fx is a convex function if x1, x2 belongs to S implies function of theta x1 plus 1 minus theta x2 less than or equal to theta times fx1 plus 1 minus theta fx2, theta line between 0 and 1. So this condition is fulfilled, then the function is said to be convex. So one example is here, fx will x square is a convex function. So you can verify this function is convex by using this condition. Concave function, say so fx is a concave function if minus fx is convex. So in this case the above theta x1 plus 1 minus theta x2 greater than or equal to theta times fx1 plus 1 minus theta fx2 theta line between 0 and 1. So here fx equal minus x square is a concave function. So you can easily verify that this is a concave function. Then every linear function is convex as well as concave. This also you can verify easily by using this condition. Generalized Lagrangian method. So in the generalized Lagrangian method, say we have to find an optimum value of the 
uh, function z equal to fx x is a variable of n variables and gix the constraint is equation type and uh, gix are also differentiable these are the conditions then now we have to construct lagrangian function l x comma mu equal to fx minus summation i goes from 1 to m mu i gix so mu i is the lagrangian multiplier we have to construct first the lagrangian function then after that the necessary conditions for maximum or minimum of fx are del l by del xj we have to find partial derivative of l with respect to xj then we have to equate it to zero again we have to find out the partial derivative of l with respect to mu i then we have to equate it to zero these are the necessary condition for maximum or minimum then after that we have to solve the uh, variables x1 x2 xn mu1 mu2 mu m after this we will get the optimal solution so now uh, let us discuss one problem is here uh, minimize z this objective function is nonlinear type then subject to the constraint so let us see how to solve this problem so first let us construct Lagrangian function let us construct Lagrangian function is follows L x1 comma x2 comma x3 then lambda equal to so you write the objective function 2x1 square minus 24x1 plus 2x2 square minus i x2 plus 2x3 square minus 2f x3 plus 200 minus lambda times the constraint x1 plus x2 plus x3 minus l of n so this is the Lagrangian function the necessary conditions for optimum solution are del l by del x1 equal to 0 so you find out derivative l with respect to x1 so this is 4x1 minus 24 this is 0 0 0 then minus this is lambda other 0 this is equal to 0 so this is equation number 1 next you find del l by del x2 so you find out derivative with respect to x2 4x2 minus i this is 0 then minus lambda equal to 0 this is equation number 2 next you find out del l by del x3 with respect to x3 so you find out derivative so this is 4x3 with respect to x3 is minus 2f this is 0 with respect to x3 is minus lambda this is equal to 0 so this is equation number 3 then next you find out del l by del lambda derivative with respect to lambda so all are 0 with respect to lambda minus x1 plus x2 plus x3 minus 11 equal to 0 so this implies you remove negative sign x1 plus x2 plus x3 minus 11 equal to 0 this is equation number 4 
So these are the conditions. So next we try to solve this. So first subtracting subtracting equation 2 from 1. So you subtract 4x1 minus 4x2. So you subtract minus 16. This is equal to 0. So you can divide by 4. x1 minus x2 minus 4 equal to 0. So this is equation number 5. Next, subtracting equation 3 from 2. So you subtract equation 3 from 2. So you write 4x2 minus 4x3. Then you subtract this. So it become plus 4. This is lambda is cancel. This is equal to 0. You may divide by 4. x2 minus x3 plus 1 equal to 0. So this is equation number 6. So after this, so adding equation 5 and equation 6. Adding 5 and 6, so this is x1, x2, x2 cancel, minus x3, so it become minus 3 equal to 0. So this is equation number 7. So equation number 7 containing x1, x3, then say adding equation 4 and 7, 4 and 7. So 4 is here. So x1, x1 means 2x1, uh, then plus x2, now x3 is cancel, minus 3, minus 11 become minus 14. So this is equation number 8. So equation number 8 containing x1, x2, equation number 5 containing x1, x2. So you may solve x1, x2 from 5 and 8. Adding equation 5 and 8. So it become 3x1, x2 cancel, so it become minus 18. So after this, x1 become 6. Now we have got equation number x1, the below x1 is 6. So x1 is 6, again from 5, from 5, so you put the below x1 6 minus x2 minus 4 equal to 0. So here is x2 equal to this is 2. x1 is 6, x2 is 2. So the below x putting here from 6. From 6. x2 is 2 minus x3 plus 1 equal to 0. So here x3 equal to 3. So from equation 1 you find out lambda. So from equation 1, 4x1 minus 24 minus lambda equal to 0. So putting the below x1, the below x1 is 6. You put 4 into 6 minus 24 minus lambda equal to 0. So the below of lambda 
become zero. So, hence the, the optimum solution is J6, x2 is 2, x3 is 3, and lambda equal to 0. So now we have got the optimum solution of the NLPP. So this is the method for solving NLPP by Lagrange method. If the constant say here x1 plus x2 plus x3 equal 11 this is the equation type. If this equation is in the inequation type then we have to solve the NLPP by using Kuntaker theory. If this is inequation type, then we cannot solve by Lagrange method. We have to use Kuntaker theory. Kuntaker theory is an extension of Lagrange theorem. So there is a one problem, NLPP. So you try this problem, try to solve this. So in the next class, let us discuss about the Kuntaker theory and how to solve. NLPP by using Kuntaker theory. So we shall take up this in the next class. Thank you. Stay home, stay safe.